and welcome to the Watch This Space Reimagination at Work Awards celebration. So we're here to celebrate our wonderful award winners. So when we decided to run a conference for National Inclusion Week, we also wanted to run awards alongside it to celebrate fantastic people who are doing great things to make the world of work more inclusive. And we wanted to make the award as inclusive as we could. So there was no entry fee, no lengthy form to fill in, and no categories to pit people against each other because we didn't want to do that. This is about celebrating people who are really doing things to drive change and to really make the world more inclusive. And we were lucky to have three wonderful sponsors for these awards who I'll introduce you to in a second. And our um, sponsors were also the judges. And it was a very democratic process. It was about voting for award winners and those that got enough votes are the people that have won our awards. And we're here to celebrate them all today. So. I should have said this right at the beginning. I'm Mo Cangela, one of the co-creators of Watch This Space, and I'm going to introduce you to everyone else on this webinar. So Allegra, you next. Hi everybody, I'm Allegra Chapman. I am one of the other co-creators of Watch This Space, and very excited to be here and learn from all the amazing stories that we've got to share with you today. Okay, and Rika, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Rika. I'm the founder of Companies in Balance. Um, we're a HR consultancy. Um, we provide flexible uh, people expertise for small to medium businesses when you need it, whether it's uh, organization development projects or your day-to-day -day HR. And we typically work with progressive companies who care both about the employee experience as well as running an effective and successful business. We typically help companies when they're in growth or change mode, typically both happening at the same time, as we all know. And my uh, real interest in inclusion comes from seeing what typical workplaces are like, where people are shoved into a box. You know, there's a real expectation of how everybody should be and what is good and what isn't. And I really want to be part of changing that where everyone has the space to shine as themselves using their strengths in the workplace. And we, we uh, create companies that are much more expansive and really allow and facilitate that. Great, thank you. And thanks so much for sponsoring the award. And Alex, over to you next. Thanks, Mo. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Alex. I work for PlusX Brighton uh, on Lewis Road. I'm here on behalf of Amber Mellership, the marketing manager of Brighton, unfortunately couldn't be here today. Um, but Plus X transforms places. We create workspaces that unlock potential, driving business growth and innovation, community collaboration and positive social impact. Uh, Plus X Brighton Innovation Hub is the home of the Bright Project, uh, fully funded business support, uh, membership sometimes not required for growing businesses in the southeast area. Uh, this amazing support service is led by Plus X Brighton in partnership with the University of Brighton. Uh, together, we have joined forces uh, as partners to deliver a one-stop shop to support business leaders wishing to part be part of a collaborative community uh, to innovate and grow. Uh, we're the proud sponsor of the uh, one of the proud sponsors of the Reimagination at Work Conference and Awards. Uh, Bright supports many different growing businesses across the uh, greater Brighton region, um, also sort of in West Sussex, uh, creating opportunities that empower underrepresented groups uh, and make space for bold uh, thinkers to flourish. Um, yeah, for any more information about that, please, uh, yeah, anyone reach out to myself or visit the, the Bright website. Um, we've got some really great uh, innovation um, programs happening at the moment um, that focus on social impact, uh, sustainability, uh, and accountability and impact reporting. So, yeah, thanks. Thank you so much, Alex. And Sarah, over to you. Hi, how are you? So I was a little bit late. That's fine. Um, I'll do a little spiel about Simply Business, shall I? <laughs> Cool. My name's Sarah. I work for Simply Business. Um, we're one of the UK's biggest um, online insurance providers for small business and small businesses and landlords, insuring over eight hundred thousand customers, um, eight hundred fifty thousand customers UK wide. Um, we first launched in two thousand and five. We've been running for almost fifteen years. We've got a co contact centre in Northampton. Um, um, head office in London and a office in Boston in the US as well. 
Um, we cover over a thousand different trades and most of our um, businesses are micro businesses, so sole traders, anything from plumbers to accountants to dog walkers. We're also an accredited B Corp um, and we try and always make a positive social impact with everything that we do. Um, and we're also voted Sunday's best time, um, Sunday Times Best Company Work For twice in a row back in 2005, 15 and 16. Um, we also try and do as much as we can for our customers and support them every, every way we can. We've run a business boost competition that we've given away 25,000 pounds to watch this space last year, our winners. Um, and we're also running again this year and the uh, winner will be announced very soon. And um, we've run a few different other incentives for our customers as well. And always just trying to support them throughout all different things they're struggling with throughout the years. So, yeah. Great. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks so much for sponsoring as well as awarding us the Business Boost uh, last year, which really changed things for Watch This Space. And we're looking out because this year's winner will be announced soon, right? Yes. <laughs> Great. OK, so um, to get us started, we are going to talk about each of our award winners. And Allegra, I think you have some slides to share. And if anyone's joining the call, if you could uh, turn your videos off and stay on mute. And then um, if we have time for questions, we'll get to that. Thank you. Right, let's get into it. So hopefully everybody can see that. Yep. So drum roll, please. Yes, welcome to the inaugural Reimagination at Work Awards 2022. Drum roll, please. Our first yeah. winner is. Oh, that was an anticlimax. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So um, yes, I'm going to talk about our first winner, who is Bud Johnson from Barco, which is the Bryson and Hove Black Anti-Racism Community Organisation. So this is a community interest company formed to improve the lives and experiences of black people living, working, studying and visiting Bryson and Hove. And it was founded in the summer of 2020 in the wake of the uprisings and worldwide acknowledgement of the racism that black people face in our societies. And their aim is to improve the lives and experiences of black people living, working, studying and visiting Brighton and Hove through the celebration of being black, black culture and black led events for the community. So Barco really celebrate black culture and provide local influencers with a platform to share their knowledge, share their expertise and talents with the community and beyond and to create a safe space that allows vulnerable individuals to gain confidence and build on networks. And they aim to host the first Black Carnival for Brighton & Hove, which will support businesses and tourism for the city. And um, they, they run lots of events. I've seen a lot of their events that they run. So I think just this week, actually, they had a, a business working, a networking event for um, business leaders in the Black community. So they're doing lots of fantastic things to really support people and celebrate as well. Um, and for Bud, as marketing director for Rivervale, Bud is one of the few black men at a senior position in Sussex's corporate sector. So he's a real role model. So we were absolutely thrilled that Bud is one of our award winners. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, congratulations to Bud and all of the team at Barco. They do such amazing work. And, um, you know, we, we've been aware of the work because Mo and I, well, Mo is a Brightonian, I live up the road, but we, um, yeah, we're aware of the amazing work that they do. And so, yeah, hugely well deserved. Congratulations. Um, so, should we do another one? Let's move on. Yeah. Here's number two. It is Stephanie Pryor from Peelies. And I believe that's recap. Yeah. That's just about Stephanie. So, Stephanie uh, is, has a great example of a hybrid career where she's making impact on representation and inclusion on several fronts across business, politics and media. And we wanted to give her this award because she shows how much we can do as individuals as well to disrupt the world of work and make it more inclusive. She's a business development and marketing manager for Healy's LLP, where as a firm with Stephanie's support, they've led on a range of campaigns and initiatives that promote diversity and inclusion. For example, in 2019, Healy's were just one of two law firms to participate in Brighton Pride. In 2020, they hosted the biggest event in the city for International Women's Day, which then inspired other businesses to also um, put on events supporting women in business. And she has dedicated a lot of her time to support projects that 
encourage confidence building, networking, and challenge existing social barriers. Alongside of that role at Healy's, Stephanie also supports community-based organizations, including Barco, uh, our other award winner, Brighton and Hope Black History Group, Bridging Change, and the Racial Harassment Forum. Um, so she supports these organizations with business development and marketing projects, which have helped them increase their networks, raise their profiles, generate funding and host events. And if that's not enough, uh, she's also a presenter for a local TV station, Latest TV. And she, again, promotes and ensures exposure for different communities and local news. And she's the only black female TV presenter locally. So she uses that profile and her presence to represent the black community and her voice to support and encourage more women of color to be recognized, heard and take their seat at the table. And she's also used the connections that she has in the media and PR worlds to promote individuals and businesses um, that support diversity and inclusion. And she also somehow, I don't know how, finds time to be a standing invitee for the Tourism, Equality, Culture and Community Committee for Brighton and Hope City Council. And again, she's the only woman of black heritage on that committee and uses that position to influence a network, to in enhance support and representation of the black, Asian and ethnic minority communities. And indeed her presence has supported the reallocation of funding for these communities. And she has led conversations and debates uh, in relation to the council's anti-racist pledge and reviews of existing policies and campaigns so that we can better support the council's anti-racist strategy. So all in all, she's someone who is really reimagining business and media by being visible and advocating for and raising the voices of communities of people of color and also other marginalized groups. And she continues to demonstrate the significance of embracing diversity and inclusion in politics, business, and the media. Thank you, Rika, and congratulations, Stephanie. She is amazing. Like, you, you said you don't know how she gets time. I really don't know. Like that just made me tired listening for. I don't know people. either. I don't know how she finds time to do everything. She's fantastic. Yeah, she is amazing. So congratulations, Stephanie. Very well deserved. Our next winner is Lucy Tarrant from Cognitive Law and Sarah. I think you've got a few words to say about why Lucy is a worthy winner. Sure. Um, so Lucy co-founded Cognitive Law, a boutique consult consultancy law firm in 2014. Lucy was previously a partner in a large regional firm which reflected all the traditions of the legal sector. Lucy was at the time a lone parent working long hours in the office with structured time and fee targets and little flexibility to work from home. With an entrepreneurial spirit, Lucy wanted to create a law firm where everyone could manage their own time in a way that suited their lives. Cognitive Law was founded to allow solicitors to be their own boss, to manage their own time, their clients and their workloads. No targets, no set hours and no internal meetings. Cogn Cognitive Law engages consultants, solicitors where, who are self-employed and who directly reap the rewards of their hard work. Success is measured not just on turnover, but on the happiness of the solicitors. This, is, this approach also works well for clients who are able to meet their solicitors at a time suited to them, be it during the evening or at the weekend and in a location of their choice. The well-being of the team is fundamental to how cognitive law works. Lucy know, knows that if her work team is happy at home, they are productive and as efficient at work. She fully supports the team in following their passions within, outside the, within and outside the law and wouldn't have it any other way. Lucy believes in working to live, not living to work, and balancing work with life in order to maintain good mental health and a happy home. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Sarah. And um, yeah, we should say it was Lucy's team that nominated her. Of, um, how much they love the work that she does and the, the organisation that she's created. And I think that in itself is a real credit to Lucy as a leader that... Um, her team loved her so much they wanted to give her an award yeah and they and cognitive law have a fabulous reputation 
uh, for being a fantastic uh, place for people to work and really flexible. Yeah. Yeah, sounds nice. I know a lot of, uh, I voted this one because I know a lot of lawyers who work very, very yeah. long hours. And some of them even say it's not even worth it. And yeah, so it's really nice to see yeah. a nice law firm that treats their employees like that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I know people who have law degrees who've been pushed out of the profession because of the uh, the culture and the working hours and the setup. And yeah, it's, it's fantastic to see somebody thinking about law in a different way and not just saying this is the way it has to be. And that's what these awards are all about. Yeah, that's what we like. So congratulations, Lucy. Congratulations, yeah. Right, next up, and she's in the room. <laughs> yeah. It is, well, it's the team at A Squared, but also Angie McKenna. So Alex, I'm gonna let you tell us all about Angie and A Squared and why they're amazing. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, this is an award for uh, A Squared, um, but with particular recognition for their head of people and culture, Angie McKenna. Um, a Squared is a full service app creation agency uh, which largely thanks to Angie's work uh, has integrated purpose and core values into every aspect of the employee life cycle from employer branding to hiring onboarding and the development of team members. Uh, A squared have been reimagining work not only by ensuring that a range of measures policies and processes are in place to support employee development performance and well-being uh, but by including their voices in the developing process, in developing the processes. Uh, they've made a commitment to employee mental health and signed up to a menopause pledge and pregnancy loss pledge to support employees through challenging times that are often ignored by employers. Um, they are also measuring hard data, which we love. Um, so they know that it's all this work means that employee engagement has increased uh, and the team are more open and honest about how they're feeling. Uh, a squared employees say that they feel supported, encouraged and listened to. Uh, the senior leadership team and line managers recognise and amplify the inner brilliance of all A squared employees by engaging um, with each and every one of them as human beings by promoting a people first organisation, listening to and taking into consideration and implementing their ideas and suggestions. Uh, the team work together with a common purpose to achieve the best possible outcomes for clients and employees. Um, and they've also made a commitment to sustainability and climate best practices, as well as making a positive impact on their wider community. Um, so doing some amazing things and yeah, uh, particular recognition to um, Angie McKenna as well. So Brilliant. Yeah, great to hear more about A Squared. A Squared, they're a fantastic company. So congratulations to Angie and the team at A Squared. Angie, I don't, I don't want to massively put you on the spot, but as you're <laughs> here, if you, um, if you feel like it, coming off mute and, and putting a video on and saying hi and um, and saying a few words, then um, then feel free to do so. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. I don't know if you can. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, we're really delighted to have won this award. Um, a squared have, have come a long way since I joined, uh, well, a year ago this month. So a year ago in October. Um, but it, it's not easy um, promoting and creating and changing a culture. Um, but I'm really, really proud of the team here and, uh, you know, just embracing the, the positive changes. Um, but I think also because we um, specifically want to involve the, the wider team rather than having the senior leadership making decisions and then us coming in and implementing it. Um, we're kind of starting from the bottom up as well. We want to hear our employees' uh, um, suggestions and put them in place. So, uh, yeah, really, really, really lovely company to work for um, and yeah, proud that we could be part of uh, this award as well. Thank Congratulations, you. Congratulations, Angie, and you and the team. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations, Andy. Very well deserved. And yeah, brilliant to hear that commitment from the whole team to really kind of drive and change what, what you've achieved in a year. Is, it's can't, so. can't do it alone. Um, yeah. As much as I'd love to say that it was all my work, I can't <laughs> do it alone. <laughs> Absolutely. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thanks. And thanks for allowing me to force you to join in. So, yeah. <laughs> <It's> okay. <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much. Okay. Let's move on. We're halfway through. The next award is to 
Digital Nomad Girls and their founder, Jennifer Lax. So this is one that really, really resonated with me when I saw the award entry and I was, I was really excited to hear about what Jennifer's doing. So I will tell you a little bit about that. Um, my uh, Alexa device decided to join in with that. Um, <laughs> Jennifer is a scientist by, um, by career originally, but um, she decided after she finished her PhD that she was going to go backpacking for one year. And that was in 2013. And she's still going. <laughs> she's still um, living the digital nomad life and traveling and working all around the world. Um, she really fell in love with that digital nomad entrepreneur existence. But one of the things that she discovered about that is that although it offers amazing flexibility and work-life balance, it can also be pretty lonely and quite a challenging way of life. So she realised that this was a real issue that, and it wasn't just her that was struggling with it, that a lot of people had this problem. It also quickly became clear that the online business world was every bit as male dominated and rife with hustle culture, toxic productivity and competition as the life of academia that Jennifer had just left. And she had no intention of swapping one rat race for another. So she's decided to do something about it. And she created a community that was really different. And that is Digital Nomad Girls. So it was born seven years ago. And they also have a virtual co-working community called The Lab, where Jennifer supports ambitious and kind, globally-minded women on their entrepreneurial journeys through virtual events and shared learning experiences. Jennifer also runs in-person retreats and offers consulting on intentional community design. The Lab offers support and connection for solo entrepreneurs, so it's colleagues for people who are working by themselves. And it also fosters curiosity and an experimentation as a mindset, hence the name. Jennifer encourages her members to figure out what works for them in their work and their lifestyle, instead of just following the usual cookie cutter formulas that are so common in the business world and that we've been taught are the only way of doing things because they are not. And Jennifer says experimentation isn't just for scientists. So although during her science career, she learned an experimental mindset, she wants to share that with entrepreneurs too. Jennifer is also a passionate advocate of collaboration over competition, which is something Mo and I talk about a lot and we love, so that resonated really strongly with us. Um, she's created an environment where women can share their skills and their time and their resources with one another and see each other as colleagues and supporters rather than competitors. So they refer clients to one another, they give each other feedback, they cheer each other on, and really importantly, Jennifer tells us they believe in each other even when they don't believe in themselves. And I think a lot of us here as people who run our own businesses or are in senior roles can relate to the imposter syndrome and the feelings of um, not being good enough that we all have from time to time. So having those people in your life who believe in you and you don't believe in yourself is incredibly important. And in fact, it was one of Jennifer's members who pushed her to nominate Digital Nomad Girls for this award, even though Jennifer wasn't sure she'd get it. So she has, <laughs> so I'm really glad that that first pushed you to apply, Jennifer, because you've done amazing work with Digital Nomad Girls. You've created a brilliant community. And again, the fact that it's your members pushing you to uh, apply for awards just goes to show what a great job you've done. So congratulations, Jennifer. Yes, congratulations. I loved everything I read about Digital Nomad Girls. It's just fantastic. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, definitely. Right, we will move on to Clear Left and Rika is going to talk to us a little bit about Clear Left and it was Rebecca Groves who nominated them and is accepting the award on their behalf. So Rika, tell us about Clear Left. So Clear Left are a design transformation consultancy who help organisations reach their digital potential. And I think it says a lot that they were nominated by an employee because the staff are treated and respected as multifaceted people and supported to deliver their best work and also manage other responsibilities in their lives at the same time. And the ethos of respect for employees comes across in many different ways. Clear Left are first of all employee owned and they have a good gender balance, which I'm sure is partly due to the flexible working approach that approaches that they offer. 
And even, for example, when they moved to new premises, everyone was involved in designing the office so that it really suits the people who are going to work there. Um, most importantly, staff have complete autonomy over when they work and where they work. The leadership are dedicated to looking after employee well-being and treat the team with trust, respect and compassion. The leadership at Clear Left always make it clear that they put my welfare first. They, they check to make sure that I'm not overworking to compensate for the flexibility and that I'm finding time to look after myself. Um, in the nomination, um, we particularly want to highlight how beneficial this flexibility is for people with caring responsibilities. And we know that uh, carers are often pushed out of the workplace because companies are too inflexible and which then has a huge financial and emotional impact on those individuals, not to mention that businesses are missing out on a huge uh, ream of talent out there because of that. But at Clear Left, um, this inclusive, flexible working is wo woven into the culture so that it doesn't feel like uh, special privileges or you have to ask for flexibility or you having to be really anxious about how you manage it and how you how you juggle all of that. Um, everyone is completely empowered to work in a way that works for them as unique individuals. And in fact, this works better for everybody, not just those with caring responsibilities, for example. Um, as a working parent with multiple care responsibilities, the inclusive practices at Clear Left have had a big impact on me. Um, the autonomy in the hours that we work has meant that I never feel bad if I have to reschedule a call or shift my working hours. And I'm able to distribute my hours in a way that makes sense, both for me and the delivery of my work. And I don't ever have to justify my working hours. And the flexibility of location means that I'm able to go back to support my family through ill health, for example. And I think we all know carers who've had to choose between the demands of a job that they enjoy and providing care for their loved ones. And nobody should have to make that choice. It's better for both business and people if we can accommodate personal life, personal responsibilities and, and work and work responsibilities. So this is why we wanted to award Clear Left to showcase real best practice and the benefits of offering flexible working. And in the nomination, it was pointed out that, you know, this shouldn't be radical anymore in this day and age, but unfortunately it still sounds quite radical. Um, the approach that Clear, Clear Left have taken to flexible working means that you're not singled out if you have different needs to other people. Uh, and that to me is real inc inclusion because you don't have to feel, oh, I'm different, I'm being difficult, I'm causing uh, trouble for everybody else. Instead, when you build in those practices that work for a variety of different lifestyles and different needs, then everyone is included by default. And nobody has to feel different. So congratulations to Clear Left for managing to do that in an amazing way. Yes, fantastic to hear about. So congratulations to Clear Left and also to Rebecca for nominating Clear Left too. Um, it really does sound like, you know, all of the things we talk about, Allegra, in our work, they're really like, that's how they are, where you shouldn't have to apologise if you have caring responsibilities. That's part of life, for example. So yeah, it's really fantastic to hear about all of that. And congratulations to everyone at Clear Left. Yeah. Definitely. And um, and just, yeah, really well done to everybody because it's quite it's a bold move to take to work mm. in that way. And it's brave. And um, a lot of people have a lot of reservations about it. And it just goes to show that it works. And um, we at Watch This Space have, you know, we have no set hours and there's no set locations. It's all very flexible. But a lot of people say to us, oh, well, that's OK for you because you're quite small and, uh, you know, you can do that. But it just goes to show that you can do it at scale. Yeah. It still works. It's, um, and it is just best for everybody. And the reality of life is more and more people are going to be in a situation where they've got, you know, the sandwich generation mm. set up, they've got elderly parents to look after, they've got children to look after, 
they've got other you know responsibilities and um you know more and more people will find themselves pushed out of the workplace and organizations will lose talent if they can't adapt to accommodate that and even people who don't have those responsibilities are still entitled to a life and <laughs> we should still be able to live outside of work it shouldn't be about having to just slot our life in around our work so yes I feel very passionate about this and yeah. um, I could go on about it for a while but I will <laughs> stop there and just say congratulations yeah. KLS, and I will move on so next up is Matt Williams from Enterprise Nation so Alex you're going to tell us about Matt thank you Allegra so um Enterprise Nation have recently begun their diversity uh, and inclusion journey. Uh, with full disclosure, they've been working with Watch This Space to help them do that. Um, Matt is the DNI champion who has been taken, who has taken on the responsibility of moving it and driving it forward. Um, so it was Matt's colleagues that nominated him for this award because of his dedication and enthusiasm for the role. Matt has been focused on gaining robust data uh, and insights to ensure that the decisions are based on genuine knowledge and understanding. Uh, Matt is also launching a culture club to drive consistency uh, and make sure that Enterprise Nation deliver what is needed across the organization and that D uh, and I is not considered a tick box exercise. It is a challenging task that Matt has taken on in addition, in addition to his day job, um, but he has done it all with a smile on his face and has gathered buy-in from across the organization, including at senior management level. Uh, so it's individuals like Matt that are driving change within their organizations and throughout the nation. So huge congratulations on this award and for getting some well-deserved recognition. Yes, congratulations to Matt and Enterprise Nation. And yes, we do know the team there. We've been working with them for a while now. And Matt's a great example of someone who's really driving that change and taking accountability and taking colleagues with him on this because no one can do this kind of work alone. You need to really get buy-in from around the organisation. He's a great example of someone who's really doing that. Yeah, 100%. I've been working with Matt quite closely on the work that they've been doing. And he, um, you know, that... that um, that bit about him having a smile on his face is so true. He's so, so true. true, yeah. Even when I bombard him with 10 million <laughs> things that he needs to be doing, he's still enthusiastic about it and positive. And that's why he's managed to get that buy-in. And that buy-in is so important in making things happen, making sure that you're taking people with you. And Matt has done that brilliantly. And that's a big part of that is because he's so passionate about it and so enthusiastic. And he really makes clear why this is so good for everybody and um, you know why it's going to benefit the organisation. And, um, and, you know, he's been really committed to making sure this is done in a robust, clear way and, um, you know, making sure they've got the data to make their decisions, making sure that they've got a clear action plan, making sure they know what they're doing. Um, and yeah, he's just, he's been fantastic. And in case anybody thinks that this is all rigged because Matt is one of our clients, um, this was done in a fully democratic way. It was. Like his vote. <laughs> we did not influence them. We didn't um, think we were anything but we are very thrilled see Matt win because he's been doing some brilliant work so well done Matt very yeah. well done Matt. congratulations Matt who he's on, I think he's been on holiday actually this week so he may not know yet because and he he has, yeah. I'm not sure he's back yet yeah he's probably avoiding the emails he's probably like oh what does she want now yeah no, it's a good thing, <laughs> right who is next I think actually this is our very final winner so we're coming to the end of the awards so the last one goes to Graphite Digital and the big boss Rob is um, is the one accepting the award. But I should say it's the entire team, not just although we love Rob and he is wonderful. Um, it's not him specifically; it's the whole team yeah. and the, the incredible work that they have been doing and that several different people have been leading across the organisation. So, Sarah, please tell us about Graphite Digital. Cool. Congratulations, Graphite Digital. Um, they're a digital customer experience agency collaborating with healthcare and pharmaceutical organisations around the world to create digital experience that are truly aligned to their audience's needs. Graphite have recently begun several pieces of work to enhance their employee experience. They've been working together to define their values as a whole team to make sure they're reflected and resonated with the whole organization. They've now set up about introducing new initiatives to make sure they live those values and then embed them within everything they do. 
they have begun to focus on mental health and wellness, launching a new employee wellness action plan where staff could c confidentially share as much or as little as their personal needs when it comes to mental health at work. They have trained up two qualified internal mental health first aiders who are equipped with practical skills to spot triggers and signs of mental health issues and can support others across graphite. They also launched a new agency-wide stress and well-being policy and are now focusing on training line managers, ensuring a clear escalation process. As a busy digital agency with a hybrid setup, multiple communication channels, and in use sim, sim, simulation, oh, I can't say this word. Simultaneously. <laughs> simultaneously, they wanted to establish ways of working and communicating with each other. They would suit and benefit everyone and offer clarity to new and existing team members. They wanted the process of agreeing these guidelines to collaborative and collaborative and based on their opinions of the whole team. So they have done th that work together. They also wanted to ensure fairness across the agency. So they set up standardizing the PDP, professional development plan and pay rise review process. They now have a transparent processes, timeframes and guidelines for their entire team, weekly one-to-ones with their line managers for all staff and provide a regular chance to discuss goals and progression and anything else that the staff need to support with. Professional development feedback is linked to their agency values. So they're constantly checking back against them and doing our best to live them day, day to day. In June, they also achieved a B Corp status. Woo. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, Sarah, you know what it takes to achieve people status. So you know that that's yeah, right. it's a really, really tough process. It's like I think there's over like 200 questions and it's a massive process. I know there's been a massive backlog as well. Um mm. so um really big congrats to them for doing that. Yes, fantastic. And uh, again, a bit of disclosure there. We do know Graphite. Um we've done some training with their team. Um, and actually, Sarah, you may have seen the team. You know the video, our winners video. That's the team we were training. Ah, uh, no way. <laughs> the graphite team. Yeah, so it's fantastic to see them win. And yeah, great to hear about all the fantastic work they're doing. Um, and it was the team that actually, um, this is a four with Rob leading on accepting the award. But yeah, really great to see such a fantastic company. Yeah, again, you know, we can vouch for how committed they are to, to making that change and, that, you know, what really stands out to me but about graphite is how much of a, um, a collaborative process it is how much they bring everybody's views in and um, and you know really want to work together on this it's not top down it's you know very much team driven and they do this together so it's fantastic and so yeah congratulations graphite yeah that's it that's it those are our awards those are our winners <laughs> Yeah. So congratulations, everybody. And judges, I just wondered, you know, if um if any of you kind of had any kind of real takeaway um, you know, points from any of the the winners to sort of any themes that stood out to you or anything that you kind of thought you you sort of learned or been inspired by in all of the winners or anything that um that stood out to you. Maybe I'll ask Mo first just to give everybody time to think. So yeah. Kind of <laughs> I was gonna say also an advice for next year because now we've run yeah. this once, we have to do it again. So <laughs> Yeah, I think the, the themes that really stood out is actually those that were in companies, in teams, all said it's about the team. And I know somebody has to nominate but the company, but it really is about that. So that really stood out. And it's about people that are driving change. And really, that's, that stood out too. And um, I think the winners all talked about driving change, taking action, lots of examples of things they're doing. Um, as, as we rattled off some of the things they were all doing, it was like, wow, how did people have time to do all of these things? There were so many things that they were all doing. So, yeah, really fantastic to see. And a great mix of people who have won as well, from individuals to, to companies. And, yeah, as I said, this was an idea to run these awards. We'll definitely be doing it again. And I would say it's really a, about celebrating people who are driving change. Um, and really sort of celebrating those people. And it's been fantastic to see them all sharing on social media that they've won as well. Yeah. How, about, would, you, how I, about you, Allegra? I was, yeah, I was just going to say, I would just, I would add to that, um, that if you're thinking of applying for next year, don't think you have to wait until you've got it all perfect. Because I think, um, you know, quite a lot of the, the organisations that have won were really honest in their um, applications that we, we're not there yet, you know, we're not done. Um, and nobody is, and, and Mo and I talk to our clients about this all the time, that you're never finished, this is never done. It's an ongoing, evolving process. And I think a lot of our winners really recognize that, that, that there wasn't really a kind of end point. Um, and a lot of them said, you know, we're just at the start of the journey. 
but we're learning and we're growing and we're committed to that and I think what what really um you know we really value or I certainly really valued when when I was breaking for my winners with people who um you know just had, had just really kind of made that commitment to that journey and that learning um, and and we're making kind of tangible steps towards it rather than just sort of going well we want to do this but you know we'll just, we'll just think about it <laughs> they were they're going okay we really want to do this and we're gonna you know we're gonna start and we're gonna really start kind of you know making changes and looking to see what the impact of that is and, and how it's going so yeah I think um you know definitely that the winners are all incredibly worthy and have really demonstrated that you can make these initiatives work and um, there's some really bold brave work going on there big changes happening but they've really shown you know that they're, they're you know they're not perfect but they are committed to that continual process of learning so yeah if you're going to apply next year don't think you have to be perfect but show us tangible actions um, and if you can measure your impact and, and sort of look at what change you've made and what you know what that's meant for your people and your business then we would definitely love to hear about that so do any of our judges come in on that has anybody got any thoughts to share yeah for me um one thing that stands out is the a lot of the changes that have happened when you're taking the whole team along with you and collaborating as we said earlier rather than competing or rather than leading from the top really involving the whole team and that's when you see the biggest impact of the change and people feel invested in making this happen together and that takes a bit of humility from from leaders to say okay this isn't just me I'm gonna involve everyone everyone has a say in this so that's one for me and I really liked uh, the comment about a squared actually where they have seen the employee, um, what was it, that they've seen that people feel more uh, willing to speak about their mental health and how they are and about themselves and be more open because of the policies that they've put in place. So that to me is a real tangible impact of the change. So actually, if you do do these things and you commit to it, it will have an impact on how people are feeling and their experience of working the company, uh, which I think is amazing. So well done to all the brilliant winners that we've seen today. Yeah, definitely. Thanks so much, Rika. Um, Sarah, anything to, to add on that? Yeah, so um, I think it's just really nice to see businesses um, putting their employees first and their well-being and their flexibility. And it just shows that they're onto a really good thing and to, with some of the businesses being nominated by their employees. Um, but just a really nice positive change for the future. Um, and hopefully more businesses can kind of work and put well-being first and, and put flexibility first. And um, yeah, there's that, that really nice line of um, they want their employees to live Know, to work what is it live to not to live to work but to, oh god I don't know what I'm saying <laughs> I like that line I know what you mean yeah. you have that flexibility yeah. of working your own hours and getting the job done and and the um graphite with their all their well-being and um mental health first aiders we have them here as well and it's just a really positive change where you you know there's someone you can speak to when you're when you are struggling um and there is definitely lots going on with mental health as post covid now the um kind of cost of living crisis you do need that support and it's so nice to see that businesses are, are kind of doing that and making a change for the future yeah 100% yeah thank you so much Lara Alex what are your thoughts on that thanks yeah me and Logo I think you really touched on some of the things that I wanted to sort of say and it is about being bold it is about being brave um you know it's it's almost going against the grain a little bit but it's definitely changing it's tied to changing in the way that we work um for obvious reasons over the past couple of years um but it, you know it's, it's becoming the norm and it's, it's hugely encouraging to see these businesses in particular making such great changes within their organizations and you know we we did meant you did mention that it's you know it's it's organizations and groups and groups of people that like have to implement this change but there are, there are individuals that within these groups you know groups are made up from individuals so if one thing I will say is that if if there is a sustainability champion or a DEI champion in the business 
just you know make sure you support them because they they you know they need support and these actions will only be implemented uh, together so um yeah it's it's uh, that's what i have to say i guess no, that's brilliant that's a really important point actually that you know these people need your support you they yeah. can't do it by themselves you know if you if you want to see change in your organization please do yeah help these people out and yeah. um yeah give them your support and uh and talk to them as well tell them you know how they can help and what they can be doing because that input is is incredibly valuable as well so definitely a very very important point um, I want to say a huge thank you to all three of you for being involved and for making these awards happen because they would not have happened without you. Um, we would never be able to give them. There, they do all get prizes. We should yeah. say there is a prize in this. You don't just get the uh, the glory. They've all had their prizes. Yeah, <laughs> you do get a prize as well, and that is what's the prize. It's a voucher um, to spend exactly. on, on. They, they yeah. get to choose. They get to choose their own prize yeah. uh, because we uh, don't want to impose. <laughs> things on them that people might not like so they get to choose their own prize so that um hopefully do tell us award winners what you did choose as your prize we'd love to see it and let's see what you got but um yeah none of this would have been possible without simply business without plus x and the bright program and without companies in balance we wouldn't have been able to do any of it so massive thank you to all of you for being involved we've absolutely loved you being part of this process it's been amazing um Let's quickly come to each of you, uh, tell everybody where they can find out um, more about your organisations, how they can get in touch with you, how they can follow you on social media, all of that sort of thing. Um, and all of that uh, kind of jazz. So Alex, where can people find out more about Bryce and PlusX? Cool, so PlusX, I mentioned earlier, is the innovation hub uh, currently in Lewis Road in Brighton. We're looking to open more hubs throughout the UK, sort of transforming spaces um the bright project that supported um these awards um is a collaboration between bright university and plus x um and we support uh, smes in the greater brighton and hove area um offering them yeah business support um particularly with two of the, two of the programs we're running at the moment that are membership uh no membership required so we've got the pioneers program um which is focused on people planet and partnerships so you know, it's really, um, really on point, I think, with these awards, you know, it's, it's, it's about why it's so important to begin this journey um, towards sort of changing the way we work and why it's been going to become even more important in the future if we're looking to partner with larger corporations, uh, particularly because it's going to be part of their, um, you know, if you're going to be part of the supply chain, it's going to be it's always just going to become some, so much more important. Um, and the other one, we the other program running at the moment is a product-based program um so that's for people that are innovating existing or new products and that will be taking place in the workshop uh within the plus x building but to find out more just um reach out to us on any of the socials or to myself or amber mellership the marketing manager on linkedin um yeah brilliant thanks alex and um, sarah where can people follow Simply Business and find that? I know you also, you're always running exciting competitions. Yeah, people should follow you. Yeah. <laughs> but you're <laughs> always running. Say, um, for all your insurance needs, simplybusiness.co.uk. But um, also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, just at Simply Business. We run uh, small business webinars. We had one on empowering women in business. Um, we also um, run yeah, different competitions, Business Boost, which will be next year. Um, but if you just follow us, um, you'll see different comments about that on our different channels thank you brilliant thanks so much sarah yeah business, uh, simply business are always sharing amazing things and information and resources and competitions and exciting things so um yeah i don't very often recommend that people follow insurance companies on <laughs> social media but simply business is definitely <laughs> worth following because they are yeah yeah so we do um cool. we do different guides as well one of the yeah. most popular ones is uh, how to do a tax return which is very popular in january so <laughs> watch out for that one yeah <laughs> very useful to have and Rika where can people find out about companies in balance so you can follow us on LinkedIn or on Instagram um, and uh, online companiesinbalance.com so we're a HR consultancy and we can support you with any projects or setting up to employ people if you're growing and you need help with recruitment or building your culture we support you with all those things in a flexible way working in light with your own culture and your strategy thanks so much Rika. and i think we uh, give ourselves a cheeky plug as well we are watch this space 
So if you have been inspired by any of the award winners and indeed any of the conference speakers that we have been showcasing as part of the Reimagination Work Conference, and you would really like to make meaningful change in your organisation, then we offer audits, services and training and strategies to help you move forward with your inclusion journey. So you can find out more at watchthisspace.uk or you can follow us on your favourite social media platform. We are at Watch This PPE. And we have had an absolutely amazing time running yeah. our first awards. It's been really wonderful. So huge thank you to all of the sponsors for making it possible. So one more time, that's Simply Business. It is the Bright Programme at Plus X and Companies in Balance. So yeah, thank you all so much. We couldn't have done it without you. Huge congratulations to all our winners. Yeah. And thank you to everybody who's been sharing things on social media and being part of the conversation. We will be back next year but this has been really fantastic thank you all so much thanks everyone bye thanks a million thank, thank you, you. Bye. 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 see you later bye